One of the reasons my dad went to Ghana is he wanted to help restore democracy to the country, and he fought tirelessly until his death when he was able to help put a democratic government in place. As a child, we had a national curfew where you couldn't be outside after 6 p.m. The government had been overthrown by military rogues, so there were police running the streets, and there was a lot of chaos and turmoil. The role that television played during this time was uh, incredible because in spite of everything that was going on around us, it was our magic box. It was our place where we could escape. I saw stuff on space exploration, people walking on the moon. It was also where I began to wonder what it would feel like to be inside of the television. When I got back to America, I remember it very clearly. It feels like it was just yesterday. I had a moment of insight as we were driving because I saw the street lights, I saw these tall buildings, it was just so much. The moment of insight that I had as I was driving past all of these was that someone must have created it. How did these things come about? Anything that we can imagine, because I had imagined myself in America, so I said in that moment that we are only limited by our own imaginations, and that whatever we could truly imagine, it's possible. And so I, I set out to live my imaginations. As a deep space scientist, I worked on things like NASA SETI, sending heat probes into space in search of intelligent life forms. And as a satellite um, engineer, I worked on television network engineering uh, for the likes of HBO, Disney, and, and the list goes on. My first VR experience for me was like that burning bush experience, right? I tried it on and I was like, oh my God, I felt like I was five years old again. And I was sitting in front of the television wondering, but this time I didn't have to wonder. I knew exactly what it felt like to be inside of the television, to have that experience and feel like you're in that moment, time and place. Everything I've been doing up until this moment has been leading up to this. And so I knew exactly then that I had to create a conduit for other types of content beyond gaming. And that's when I started looking into virtual reality concerts, virtual reality for healthcare and education, and all of the different other ways in which we could leverage uh, virtual reality. I'm excited about VR for two reasons. One, it's the next evolution of the web. Right, we had Web 1.0 with just text and pictures, and then we had Web 2.0 with video, text, and pictures, and then now we have Web 3.0, which is a 3D web. Through VR, you can actually put someone in a scene, in a setting where they could experience the pain of another person, where they could learn how to heal, where they could just maybe escape and feel like they're somewhere else. It's ultimately going to open up their mind the same way my mind was opened. I think that at its best, VR is a delivery mechanism for compassion. When I was coming to America, there's that little pathway that you walk to get onto the plane. As I was getting ready to walk that, my dad stopped me and that was the first time I'd ever seen him cry. And he said, my um, dream for you is that you will always see our world with that sense of wonder. And that my hope for you is as you go without us, that wherever you point the focus, that you will make magic. And in some moments, when I see the amazement on the faces of people, I feel like, yeah, we've, in a way, created a bit of that magic that he talked about. And we don't want to lose that sense of wonder. 